Good morning, everyone. Our topic today is the dry river. Our passage is Joshua 1, 1 through 11, and chapter 3, 1 through 17. I'm going to read the preface here to this section since it's pretty short. Forty years has passed since Israel left Egypt. The time came for the people to enter the promised land. Many hundreds of years before, God promised Abraham that his descendants would possess the land of Canaan. After years of preparation in the wilderness, Moses' work was finished and the people were ready. When Moses died, Joshua took charge and the promise was fulfilled and Joshua led the people across the river into Canaan. So we skipped over uh, several chapters, in fact books we've skipped over to get to this point uh, or kind of skipped through uh, from you know Exodus to Deuteronomy. We didn't even go through Leviticus, which is more uh, looking at the case laws spelled out from the Ten Commandments, how these things apply in every aspect of civil and social life. But uh, those were primarily for the nation of Israel. And so this, this book is giving us the big picture of Scripture, we should say, right? The, the main themes as to understand uh, the Old and New Testament and how they work together, how these themes build and grow. And so God made this promise to Abraham. We see this start to uh, come to fulfillment and cr takes crazy twists and turns through Jacob, to whose name is changed to Israel. And then we see in Joseph, and then the, the people are put in slavery, and Moses calls them out of slavery. And now here, Joshua, after 40 years, leads the people of Israel, uh, or is leading the people of Israel into the promised land. Uh, and as he takes them here across uh, the river Jordan, we see kind of another parting of the Red Sea type of deal, where God does a miraculous work through the parting of water. Now, the, it doesn't part in the same way, and it's not, to, it's not enemies attacking and being barred in on one side, but the point is that the priests were told to take the Ark of the Covenant to step foot in the water, and the God would make a path for them. And that's what happens. The water recedes back and so it goes downstream and it overflows into uh, the Red Sea. So in a certain sense, it flows upstream and overstream uh, into the sea and the riverbed is able to be walked on. So the priests carry the ark and the people follow the priests through the river. And that's what we see in these uh, two chapters, and we'll expound a little more as we look at these questions. So question number one, how did the Lord encourage Joshua? Well, he encourages Joshua by telling him to uh, be strong, to stand, uh, be strong and courageous. Verse six, uh, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land, which I swore to their fathers to give them. And so he encourages them by that promise of, of telling him to be strong, be courageous. I'm going to do this thing for you. Number two, what promises did God make Joshua? Well, we just looked at one there to give him the land. Um, I'm gonna, let's look at verse 9. kind of uh, repeats a little bit of what we see in verse 6, but furthers it. Haven't I commanded you, God says, be strong and courageous, don't be afraid, don't be dismayed, for Yahweh your God is with you everywhere you go. Um, and right before that, in verse 8, he says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous and you shall then you shall have good success. And so God promises as they obey his word, he's going to give them a land and they're going to be prosperous and successful as they enter that land. And again, he uses that phrase in there. We didn't read it just now, but in the text, if you read it, he says, do not swerve to the right or toward the left. So walk the narrow path. Walk the way God has set before you. Do the things God commands you to do. Don't do the thing God commands you not to do. Don't begin to steal and lie and murder and rob, all these things. Um, but rather, walk in the Lord's ways and you will be blessed. Three, what miracle took place to show the people that God was with Joshua? Um, so this parting of the sea or this rolling back of the water, the receding of the water that they may walk through, the Ark of the Covenant uh, goes before the people uh, and it shows the people, just like Moses, 
did the, uh, or just like God did an act of a miracle for Moses, he does it here for Joshua to show the people that God is calling him, that God is leading through him. So this is a sign not just for Joshua uh, and not just for the people, but it's a sign to the people, not only of God, but of Joshua as the leader. And so what we can, what can we take from all this? Well, I, I think that first phrase there that we looked at, to be strong and courageous, right? To, to take hold that of that which God has promised un, unto us. Some of those things are our future tense, right? We don't take hold of all of the things of faith here. Those are promised in eternity. The, the people of Israel look for uh, a temporal blessing there in the promised land. We now, under the new covenant administration, uh, ultimately realize that uh, this earth, this world is not our home, but we long for the true promised land, the final promised land, which would be in heaven, in eternity. But we must be strong and courageous. This is the call of the Christian. Uh, it's hard to be strong and courageous in a world that is against us, in a world that hates God, in a world that says, uh, go against God's law and will and you will have goodness, and you will be blessed, and you will have reward and money and fame. So the world tells us an antithetical message to the gospel. It tells us an antithetical message to the law of God, that you'll be blessed by disobeying, where God says you'll be blessed as you walk in my ways, as you'll be blessed by obeying. That's when I will prosper you. That's when I will bring about the miracles, if you will, in uh, our lives. And so... Uh, you know, we don't, we don't have direct revelation as Joshua has here where he says, you know, do this and I will do this exactly. So it's not as though we just go out to a riverbed and the water curls up for us and somehow uh, we just got to repeat what we see here in Scripture. That's not it at all. But there is a there is an aspect of our life that when we trust in God, when we're walking in His ways, when we're looking to Him to guide us, that He does bring about miracles. It does bring about prospering. It does bring about blessing. Uh, and this might come with a lot of pain and suffering and wandering in the wilderness for 40 years as the Israelites did. But at the end of the day, we can have peace. We can have a blessing. So be strong. Be courageous. Uh, don't fall into the trap of the enemy, which is to be scared and weak, to be timid, to not realize that we're in a war. But we are. So each day we must take up our weapons of warfare, which are prayer, which is which are faith, which is the belt of truth, right, the spirit. Uh, the gospel of peace. Let us arm ourselves with these things. We'll see you guys tomorrow.